Hello, 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 and welcome to Stacks of Wax, Volume 7. This is the show where I go through my record collection alphabetically and show off my collection to you. Sometimes they're rare finds, sometimes they're simple represses, sometimes they're unknown bands, and sometimes they're huge bands. But it doesn't really matter, it's all in my record collection, and that is what I'm here today to show off to you. It's like pimp my ride without the car. Alright, let's get started, and first things first... We didn't, uh, we didn't get through all the LCD sound system records that I have last time around, mostly because this bad boy hadn't shown up at my doorstep yet. This be LCD sound systems, this is happening, their 2010 release. Although Sound of Silver is my favorite, this is a very, very, very close second. You get fantastic songs such as Dance Yourself Clean, Drunk Girls, Home, I Can Change, uh... All I want. The record as a whole is incredible to begin with, but I mean those songs in particular, yeah. Yeah, just like, uh, it, it, it appears to me, now once again I only have this and Sound of Silver, that all of them are gatefolds. Whether or not they're double LPs or not, they uh, so far have both been gatefolds. Now this record in particular is, is a double LP. But uh, Sound of Silver wasn't, and that was, I don't know, maybe it was. Maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. Never mind, I take all that back. Anywho, get some nice art here on the inside. Looking pretty cool. Got all the thanks, the uh, the credits, all that fun stuff on this side, and then just a cool picture on the other side. And you get the records in here, they're all standard black, but they do have some interesting uh, sleeve covers, if you will, all with uh, various photos of the band or just things that they've experienced, I'm assuming. Yeah, this record's fantastic. Uh, Dance Yourself Clean is one of, if not my favorite, song of the 2010s. So yeah, that was a good way to kick things off. Next up is a band that you all know, uh, I would hope. If, if you don't, how in the name of hell did you find this YouTube channel? That'd be Led Zeppelin. We got Led Zeppelin 2, Led Zeppelin 4. Both of these are original, um, although the only original record itself is two because I was smart enough I wanted the original sleeve because I like the darker tone on the uh, original for Zeppelin 4 but the record was sounding pretty bad so I found a brand new copy as a repress of the actual vinyl and I stuffed that bad boy in here just because I do like the sleeve and the cover of this one slightly more than the other one I just like the darker tones to it that's about it there really is no other difference. So yeah, both of these, uh, Black Vinyl, um, Zeppelin II sounds pretty rough. It's not the end of the world, but it's, it's not as crisp as I would like it to be. I'm probably going to buy just what I did with uh, Zeppelin IV and buy just the record itself, put that in the sleeve here. Although, it wouldn't be too bad to get a new record as a whole because this boy is falling apart. Which, by the way, Zeppelin II, I've done a forever spinning on. Go check that video out, learn a little bit about the magical history of this band, specifically in Zeppelin 2, which is probably, yeah, it's definitely my favorite Zeppelin album. But yeah, pretty cool. You get the gatefold on both of these. Um, get that famous, whatever the hell that's supposed to be in there. I don't even know if you can see it very well, but it's there. Zeppelin 2, I've always liked the inside cover of this. There's nothing spectacular about it. I just think it's so gaudy that it's like hilarious. You know, the giant gold Zeppelin up there and all their names on the pillar. It's just, it's so much. It is so excessive, but it's it's also kind of funny. Yeah, Zeppelin. Uh, if, <laughs> yeah, man, I, mean, I don't even know what to say at this point if you don't know who they are. Not as a snob way, but just like, have you walked on the earth before, you know? Anywho, that was probably mean. But that's okay because I get to meet mean about myself for this next one. Because that would be... Logic's Under Pressure. That's right, his hit record. His hit, what was that? Uh, it was 2014. Hit 2014 record, Under Pressure. It's one of the first records that I ever bought um, back at a time where I thought that Logic would never make bad music. So, uh, yeah, pour one out for the homies, F in the chat, whatever the hell you do. Uh, but I bought it. I have it. I own it. It's all here on Wax. It is a double LP. Um, and I still actually do like this album a lot. I, I really do. It's definitely his best. Get the, the old Polaroids in here. Trying to look all, look all artsy-fartsy. That, that Logic fella there. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't hate this record. I hate pretty much everything after uh, The Incredibles True Story. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. But everything else after that is a uh, poo-poo on a platter. This record, one of his best. I don't know, in my opinion, his mixtapes will never be topped. I, that, that They're just the magnum opus of his discography, in my opinion. But Under Pressure still has some great songs. Uh, Soul Food's great. I love that switch at the end there. Um, Buried Alive. Um, Growing Pains 3. Uh, Nikki. Nikki's a great song. And Under Pressure. Uh, it's a shame the deluxe version actually does have a couple good songs too, but I'm pretty sure they only pressed the original mixing and the original track list on vinyl. They do have the alternative cover that is on most of the uh, streaming services, but this is the one that I ended up going with, and I have no qualms with that. I don't plan on needing to rebuy any of that crap, so it's here. That's all that matters, right? One more record in that expansive, uh, expansive list that I guess I have. Now, on the other hand... Yeah, Lord's Melodrama. This is probably my favorite pop record of the past 10 years. Absolute love every single song off of this album. Um, I need a newer Lord album, like uh, like I need water. Uh, yeah, really, really happy with this one. I got it for super cheap. Um, just This is just the standard edition. I know there are a couple like deluxe versions. Um, and as much as I actually would really like to have them, I'm pretty content with just having the original track list and all the songs that I still love. Um, it is a single LP. Open it up here. You get the uh, the lyric sheet. And you get her swimming or drowning or something. I don't know. But, yeah. Great record. Um, if you've never listened to this all the way through, you're you're really missing out. I mean, you've probably heard Greenlight. Um, you've probably heard Liability. Uh, Sober. Yeah. Homemade Dynamite, all those, all those, uh, you know, singles that probably made it to the airwaves on the radio and stuff like that. But this album as a whole is absolutely fantastic. I was never a big fan of Pure Heroin. Um, I might go back and release. I'm gonna go re-listen to that right after I'm done filming this because I gotta give that album another chance. All right, next up, ugh, I'm tired. Next up, Lou Reed's Transformer. Freaking love this record. Love it. It's a repress. There are about a million represses of this, so I don't even know which version it is to be. And that's what sucks about Discogs. Anybody out there who uses Discogs a lot, you'll understand that sometimes you go through and you're, you know, punching in the numbers, do 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 do, going on the barcode, scanning that on your phone, and then it's like 59 options of which one is yours, and there's like zero way to truly distinguish. Like you might be able to be like, okay, no. Um, this definitely didn't come out in 1985, so scratch that one off a little. No, it didn't come out in 87, scratch that. But then all of a sudden you get to, like, the 2010s where, like, the vinyl resurgence started happening again. And you've got, like, oh, three of them came out in 2010. One of them's colored, one of them's not. One of them just doesn't have a cover. I was like, what? Anyway, I'm ranting. Um, coffee's kicking my ass. Lou Reed's Transformer, I've been forever spinning on this album. Uh, go check that video out. I'm actually very proud of that one. Just fantastic glam rock, uh, punk style, I don't even know how to, do. just one of the greatest records ever recorded, period. And that's coming from Lou Reed, the man who is the Velvet Underground, so. Yeah, you get uh, Vicious, um, Perfect Day, Welcome Wild Side, uh, Satellite of Love, um, I'm So Free, Underrated Track. Yeah, great record, go check it out if you never have before, um, Lou Reed. Fantastic. Transformer. Even better. Breaking into the M's! M M M M and M. Not him though. Said so we got another rapper, uh rap duo, if you will, a collaborative project, Mad Villains Mad Villainy. That would be with uh MF Doom and Mad Lib. Uh also the damn, this is this is the episode of Forever Spinning episodes, man. Like I've got let's see, we did Zeppelin 2, we did Logic's uh, under pressure, I've done that. Um, we just covered Transformer, and now we got Mad Villain. That's four. That's a lot. Four out of ten. I, I, I've been making a lot of videos. That's cool. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic record. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this album before. If not, you're missing out. Uh, the collaborative duo of Mad Lib and MF Doom create a, just, a, a world unlike any other with their music, especially on this record. Um, it is a double LP, all on standard black vinyl. It's disappointing that it is not a gatefold, but I don't care. I can at least still listen to this on some wax. It's probably one of my most played vinyl, I gotta admit. I, I listen to this record quite a bit. 
It's a great couple tracks off here. Accordion, Meat Grinder, America's Most Blunted, um, Money Folder, Curls, uh, Figaro, great. Yeah, just Rhinestone Cowboy, all of these. All of these songs and more are available to you on this record, so don't miss out. Go listen to it. Next up, you got the Melvins. You got Houdini. This little sludge metal stoner rock, um, all that fun stuff. These guys, uh, Melvins, if you've never heard of them, if this is your type of music, if you enjoy that harder rock, if you enjoy that sludge metal sound, that super distorted guitar, bass, just completely drowned out in noise. This is really early on noise rock before it became what it is today. Yeah, this record's awesome. This is, is this the, yes it is. This is the Third Man Records repress of this. Um, they got the rights to that, so they started doing that. You got all this in here. It's a, it's a very bright, uh, but simplistic inside cover for this gatefold. And once again, I love a gatefold, and especially I love a gatefold even when it's a single LP. I know it takes up more space, but it's cooler to look at. So yeah, this is uh, all on black vinyl. Um, some great songs on here. Man, they really make it impossible to read the back of this record. Holy smokes, I never noticed that until now. Night Goat, Lizzie, uh, Set Me Straight. Yeah, I don't know. Great record, just go listen to it if you like this style. I'm sure I'll be doing it forever spinning on this record at some point. All right, last two for this episode. Like I said, I usually try to do 10 each episode and these will probably come out once a month. So my record collection can keep growing and I can keep making more content and you know, just a constant cycle. Anywho, we're moving on to Metallica. That's right, we got Ride the Lightning, which would make this the fifth, yes, the fifth Forever Spinning episode on this video. It's pretty damn crazy. I've only done like 20, so that's, you do the math. So yeah, Ride the Lightning, <clears throat> and then uh, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. I was able to get this record on Amazon, and it, by the way, I don't I don't support buying music on Amazon anymore uh, after this whole, it's, I, I'm getting political here, but after this whole them uh, supplying ICE with like facial recognition technology, that's really, really messed up. Um, so don't buy from Amazon anymore. I know it's tough. Um, I know it's more expensive to go other places, but it's just, it's a moral thing that I can't have myself doing, so I'm not promoting that in any way. But with that being said, I was able to buy this on Amazon like two years ago for $4. Not bad. Um, not my favorite Metallica record by any means. It was more or less like $4 to own this. Sure, why not? Um, yeah. Still, it's not the end of the world. It's definitely their better, their best record in a long time. But uh, Atlas Rise is pretty good. Moth into Flame. Um, that's pretty much it. Wow, I didn't realize there's a lot of songs in here that I don't even remember listening to. Um, but it is a gatefold. Get them all looking crazy in there. I love, I love the art direction that they went on for this record, though. Like, I do... It's a little too clean, um, not as in like grossness, but I just mean in, in texture and the way that everything came out, which, you know, I'm sure them being this, you know, multi-million dollar band that they have to have that kind of style. But uh, I don't know. I really do enjoy the art direction on this one. Yeah, it just looks really cool. All the faces kind of merging together like that. I don't know what it has to do with hardwire to self-destruct, but whatever. And then, of course, you get the classic Ride the Lightning. Uh, like I said, I did the Forever Spinning on this one before. Uh, Fight Fire with Fire, Ride the Lightning, From Whom the Bell Tolls, Fade to Black, Escape, Creeping Death. That's pretty much the whole entire album, but it's still fantastic. And this is also just on black. This is a repress. Um, yeah. I guess that, uh, that about does it. The back, I don't know. I'm uh, that, that seems to be it to me. That seems to be another episode in the books of this here show that we call Stacks of Wax. So that's all that I got. If you have any of these records on vinyl, leave them in the comments below, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Any music recommendations, leave them down there because apparently I was listening to Hardwire to self-destruct, so I need to, to change my path, of course. That's it. Video's over. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.